out at Hag Lake here. Uh, they just kind of stalked the lake and we're trolling, just making big S turns, slowing down, speeding up. Uh, we're about 1.3 to 0.9 miles an hour. Um, these coconut cut plugs, the new colors Brad just released, uh, we're just absolutely killing them. We're filling our uh, the cut plugs with, uh, we're filling it with tuna and they just seem to love the tuna. We're actually using uh, the Brad's K14 killer fish as dodgers. We're taking the back hook off and doing about a six foot leader to cut plug with two single hooks. So we've really started targeting these fish on these big points here. Um, it comes kind of shallow and then there's big humps and these fish are laying on either side of these humps or on top. Um, it's really nice, these, uh, that K14 almost dives around 14 feet, right where the fish are, I'm marking a bunch of fish at 14 feet, so. Uh, Hope I see it. Oh, right over here. <laughs> Woo, look at that one. So I'll kind of walk you through the setup we're using today. Uh, these are the mini coconut cut plugs here. This one's in the rotten banana. And if, I'll show you what we're filling this with here. We kind of pop the rubber band off the back, open it up, and we add some shrimp left over from steelhead fishing here. And we're just going to put it in there and put that rubber band on the back. And we're good to go. We're kind of doing a four foot leader here to a dodger and we're running in probably a half ounce weight here and it seemed like 25 poles behind the boat has been the ticket today. So we're gonna get this out here and go catch more. Get it? That's a good one. Oh! Woo! On the kokanee cut plug. Well, this is what, number 10 or so? Oh. I don't know how many we've got. <laughs> These little cut plugs. Woo! They are on fire. Doesn't seem to matter what color. <laughs> oh, that little tough guy. You little right. tough guy. Get him up. Yeah. Christine special. I'm catching these fish on these coconut cut plugs. These are the new colors that just came out by Brad's here. This copper one's been absolutely ridiculous. You caught your first fish right on the copper one. And uh, instead of weight, these fish are all later in the season here. They're all up at the top of the surface. So this is, we're using a Brad's K14. It's almost like a diver. This thing's diving about 14 feet. And uh, we took the back hook off there and the fish are just absolutely killing it. So we're gonna get back out and get some more. Oh, geez, that's a big one. Pull him over here. Pull him towards the net. Pull him towards the net. Pull. Got it! <laughs> Yay! Yay. <laughs> hey. I want to keep that one. Oh, yeah. 22, 23, 24, 25. There he is! The little guy, look at him, he's so small. Oh my god, he's so cute! Are you gonna let him go? Yep. Yeah, let's rock. just let him. Brad got floods of rock. What's up, guys? We spent all day at Hag Lake and we trolled for some trout with some Brad's, uh, the Brad's new coconut cut plugs, and we caught some fish. We caught a lot of fish. Of course, I caught the smallest one, and guess who caught the biggest one? Yep, and that was your first fish, right? And you're gonna show us how to clean it. Oh boy, then we're gonna eat them. So this is our catch and cook video. Hope you guys like it. So we're gonna lift this upside down, and then we have to cut the butt open. Brian, can you help me with this? Yep. Remember, you grab it like this. Remember, you cut. You wanna cut it for everyone? Put yep. your hand under here.
to take this process a little further. Um, you see a lot of videos are out there where they just leave the trout whole like this and they cook it. And I just don't think this is, cooks very evenly, so I'm going to debone this fish. What you kind of want to do is you see the backbone right here. You want to stick the scissors in next to the backbone and just cut on the side of the backbone like this. And cut all the way up to the head. So you're going to cut on one side of the backbone, stick the scissors in, cut on the other side of that backbone. And cut all the way up here. Go. Flip the fish around. Cut up all the way up here. cut the head off here. Okay, so now that bone you cut on either side of the backbone here, it just you can cut off in a strip. Cut it down nice and low. See how that comes off in a strip? And see that leaves that big piece of bone right there. That's how you meet now. On either side of the tail here. Let's cut the tail out. So now you're left with this big piece. You can just take your fillet knife and get underneath these rib bones here. There you go. Now this is a boneless piece of fish. There might be a little bit of pin bones up here in the top, but once we fry this, uh, those really just, you can just eat those through. So a nice big piece of fish, and it's gonna cook nice and evenly because it's butterfly open. So after you got your fish uh, deboned and cleaned and everything, I really like to dip in milk. It gets kind of that slime off. Uh, these hatchery fish, they get really slimy. Even those ones are really bright orange almost like a little salmon or something like that. So to get that really golden brown crispy batter, I like to do a little bit of flour and a little bit of panko and some seasoning. So hold that open for you. The mixture I like to do is about 50-50. Um, I just guess, not really measure. Can't really mess this part up too much. Yeah, you can mix it in there. I'm gonna close it and shake it up a little bit, mix it around. Did you close it? You got it. There you go. There you go. There you go. That looks good. I'm excited. I can taste it already. I also add, like to add a little bit of Cajun seasoning in here. I sprinkle that around. I don't know how much, just until I feel like it's good. That, garlic salt. This is really good stuff. I put that on everything. Maybe in my peanut butter and jellies. <laughs> Boom. There you go, close it and shake it up. This is where the magic happens. You get all your seasons all mixed up, whatever you want to put in this. Uh, I like it spicy, but little Missy doesn't like it spicy, so we're going to make it kind of neutral. Um, you get the fish out here that's been soaked in the milk, and you just plop it in there. And close it up. You want to shake it around for me? It's really important to get an even coating. When you kind of butterfly it open, it's going to lay flat, and it's really going to get an even surface. It's cooked, uh, cooking too, it's gonna cook nice and evenly. So 
after you got everything a nice even coating on all your fish, kind of hold the bag for me. It sh you want to pull it out and look like this. See how you have a nice even coating on everything here? It's nice and flat. I'm just going to leave it on here like that. Another kind of tip too, when you pull it out here, we can kind of shake off all the excess and lay it flat. And what we can kind of do is let these dry for a little bit and uh, we can add another second coating so you really get that really crispy fish, nice and golden brown. That's for our favorite part, the fish time, right? So we're going to throw a little piece of the batter in there to see if it's hot enough. I think it is. So you want it to sizzle like that and bubble. Um, I always like to start with the skin side down on the fish, so we're going to do that. We're going to start with, uh, actually let's start with the big guy first. You want to start with the big guy? Here we go. Big bug guy. get the fish golden brown on one side um, depending on how hot your oil is two to three minutes on either side you can always kind of lift up one side to check it here too that is not ready if you flip it over too fast it'll knock all your breading off and it won't be golden brown and delicious immediately after this fish comes out I like to finish it with a little uh, I don't know a little after the fryer sauce here I put some garlic in here about that much put some soy sauce in here that much and the key is some vinegar any vinegar will do I use the cheap stuff and this really brings out the flavor without adding a lot of salt to your fish you kind of sprinkle that over so this fish is ready to come out here I'm gonna you can see it's nice and golden brown and when you butterfly the fish like that it really cooks evenly so the cook time goes down quite a bit get underneath it I just like to let the excess oil to drain off here Kind of hold it underneath the over the pan there and it drips off. Look at that, it's nice and golden brown. Kind of flip it on the plate here. As soon as uh, this is hot, this is absolutely key here. Kind of sprinkle some of this on here. Some of that mixture we made up before, and that really just brings out the flavor of the fish without adding a lot of salt onto it. That was one of the big ones we caught. It was one of those 17, 18 inch fish and it almost took up the whole plate here when you butterfly that out. Looks good, doesn't that look good? It's mine, it was mine that I caught. There you go. So this fish was alive about five hours ago. We just got done cooking. It's nice and golden brown here. Uh, all the bones should be out of it. So I'm gonna take a bite and tell you how it is. Mmm. This fish is amazing. This so good. Fish is really, really good. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. First time having trout, and this is by far. One of the best fish I've tasted. It's good.